Thank you for being here this morning at our press conference. Uh, we have a prepared statement that you should have by now, if not, we'll make sure you get one. And uh, we'll meet in that, and afterwards we will prepare to answer some questions. On yesterday, the Louisiana House of Representatives voted 65 yeas and 31 nays and passed House Bill 71 by Representative Thomas Collins. Legislation that professes to protect public military memorials. But in reality, this bill is nothing but a Trojan horse designed to supersede the decision-making authority of local municipalities regarding use of public space. What the passage of HB 71 really revealed was that there is still present in Louisiana a deep-rooted belief in white supremacy and a desire to revere those who fought against the United States of America in the American Civil War. The Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus is offended and deeply wounded by the House's passage of this legislation. We were and are wounded because the bill attempts to rewrite history by honoring those who not only rebelled against the United States, but who fought to maintain man's greatest inhumanity to man. The system of slavery where our ancestors were considered property, less than human, women raped and abused, men slaughtered at will, and systems implemented to facilitate cultural genocide. We believe that yesterday's vote was a failure of legislative leadership, adding fuel to the fire regarding this proven divisive issue. We should be providing leadership which unite the people of Louisiana and laboring to solve the challenges facing our state. We believe as legislators, we are here to address issues that have our citizens lagging behind the rest of the nation in, too, in far too many areas, and we should be addressing these quality of life issues for our citizens, which include the following. Our looming budget challenge, quality education, equal pay for women, the living wage for our citizens, criminal justice reform, health care, and the list just goes on and on. We believe that there is no reason we cannot be first in respecting each other in how we treat each other, and how we rise above images of war, hate, slavery, and rebellion against the places we all say we love, the United States of America and the great state of Louisiana. As this bill moves through the legislative process, we are encouraging the senators of this legislative body and our government to stop this instrument of division by not further dividing our state and our legislature terminate this legislation and end any further division potential of this legislation for our state and legislature. Our children and all Louisiana citizens are depending on us not to divide, but to unite our great state of Louisiana. Thank you, and we'll be glad to take your questions. Can you talk about um, your statement that this vote revealed a deep-rooted belief in white supremacy? Well, in terms of our colleagues who voted for it, and here is, here is what we meant by there's a deep-rooted belief in white supremacy, supremacy. Almost to a person, the members who voted for this said they voted holding their nose, but this is what their constituents were calling them to do, to vote for this bill. And so when there is this kind of strong influence and desire and belief in this idea, we clearly understand we have a problem as a state, but we have to work on it. Now, in terms of that deep-rooted superiority in the municipal committee, individuals who came to testify talked about the South is rising again, told members, of our female members in particular, two, one in particular, Representative Pat Smith, that she should grow up and get over slavery. And so we're clear of the kind of divisiveness that this particular bill and this issue is about. It's not about war heroes. It's not about what they're saying. It's really about usurping the power of the local municipality regarding use of this public space. But they're using this issue to deal with these covert and now overt beliefs about white supremacy. Yes, ma'am. Are you all planning to 
looking for a word that's not retaliate, but like protest at all? Are you planning not to vote for, example, we have a gas tax bill being brought by a Republican today, or any of the tax bills where your votes are really important? From, from the beginning, we have embraced what our charge and responsibility are, is and are as state representatives collectively. What we did yesterday was a response to the disappointment in the fact that such a bill, such a divisive bill, was voted on by House members and moved forward. That was our response to that. We're now ready to get back to the work of the people, and we're ready to unite with the members as we have always done. But clearly when there's an injustice, we will respond. Yes, sir. How do you see this uh, affecting the tone of the rest of the next few weeks? Well, clearly, there has to be some healing here. Uh, and of course, we believe in the power of the human spirit. So we expect that we will be able to work together in time. Yes, sir. We do not. We have not yet. We will have a conversation with the senators about this issue coming to them. We did have a conversation with our senator, the members of the Legislative Black Caucus. Take one more question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you all upset that the head of the House Democratic Caucus was not on the floor for the bill, for the vote? He's the chairman. We're disappointed. We're disappointed, yes. Last question. <laughs> I, I am curious, we have some two against it, did he not? What does that say to you? I think what he responded to was his conscience and the moral responsibility of what this bill was about. And that, we were hoping that's what all of our members were doing, to provide the kind of legislative leadership, and even if constituents call you to embrace this kind of belief that you would step up to unite them and us, because there's only one reason. Thank you all very much, and we appreciate your presence.